I am back, YouTube. All right. So, this video is finally going to be on my intake on domestic violence. So, I'm going to let it spill. All right. Have you guys ever seen the movie, What Love Got To Do With It? The famous Ike and Tina. There's a few scenes that kind of, that I want to try to impersonate, you know, just to kind of give an intake on how domestic violence is. Now, it was this one scene where Tina, you know, they had moved to California because they finally was getting their music and stuff off the ground together. And I guess uh, by then, Ike started getting high off of cocaine and everything. So, you know, she was out there in the pool playing with the girls and she came in that little bathing suit. Like, yeah, I come out and play. You working too much. You know, come out and play. Well, I I got I got I got I got to do I got to do this music. Uh I got all this money. And she like, I know I don't owe no money to see records. You the one wanted the studio. Well, well, well I had a studio by now. If you had all them wigs and all this, that, and that. And then uh and then she was like, if you just if you just sing the song the way I tell you to, and make goddamn. And then she was like, uh, well, I, I try, but they all sound the same. And that was it. As soon as she triggered, a lot of times when guys or gals hit somebody, it's a trigger that they done did or that they done said that made this person go off. So she was like, but they all sound the same. So as soon as she said that, what? They all sound what? And he started getting closer to him. They all said, pow. <laughs> oh, I, you promised. We promised she would never hit me again. Oh. That nigga smacked her over the couch. She fell on the couch, legs, legs in the air and everything. She fell over the couch and he just kept bang, bang, and then dragged her and then threw her in the room and the kids was watching. Now that's bad. That is really bad. And another famous scene from that uh, movie was the cake. You know, Jay-Z done made, uh, you know, everybody done made um, songs or something with that quotation is eat the cake anime like he was like god damn oh, god damn this cake is good come on try some cake anime no I now I'm asking you politely and I'm saying no politely get the goddamn bow right in the face and then her friend got up and you know I try to protect her friend like don't be hitting on Tina like that so he slaps her ass and she fell down <clears throat> And this, this movie is like kind of a movie like back in the day where there was, you know, like, you know, whites and blacks kind of races going on. So this happened in a white restaurant. So he knocks her down, knocks the friend down, bow. She falls and her feet goes in the air. She falls down like, fuck you, Ike. Fuck you, Ike. You can let this man power on you, but he ain't powering on me. You know what? He's like, don't come around my house. And the friend was trying to hold Ike back. And he do the cake like, don't come around my motherfucking house. Fuck you, Ike. And then uh, Tina sat down. You know, she sat down, you know, wiping the face off. And then he was like, God damn, this cake good. Come on, Annie, hey, eat the cake. And the friend like, just eat the cake, Tina. Eat the cake. <laughs> so that goes to show that, you know, this domestic violence. But she had enough of that shit, though, because at the end of the movie, the limousine scene, when uh, I guess she was doing a numb your hole. You know, like a chant, numb your whole ring, get cure, numb your whole ring, get cure. So that's supposed to help her, I guess, to get confidence or whatever. And she got the confidence. So I guess she was about to perform at the um, the Emmy Awards or whatever. So they had the, the uh, limousine scene and she started on the plane when he was trying to lay on. She's like, get off me, Ike. And then she got up and walked upstairs. And he's like, get back here, Tina. You better get back here. So it went to the limousine scene. So they got in the limousine and he got in the limousine. Like, what's all this stuff? You try to tell me, I teach you. Like he took his boot off. He took his boot off, right? He like, I'll show you not to ever talk back to me. So he know, lift up, butt up. I'll show you ever not to hit on me. It's like, no, nah, I don't feel like it. I got not in the mood today, Ike. I'm not in the mood today. <laughs> So he like, so he, you know, he tried to hit her with a boot. Then he got on top of her and jumped. You know, say say this is him on top of her. She took her foot and pushed him in the balls. And he was like, oh. And she was like, um, she was like, is that all you got? Is that all you got? 
So she jumped on him and started scratching him, scratched his face, and he started pounding on him. So by the time they got in the hotel, her lip was sitting out here, her eye was sitting out here. He, he had scratch marks all on his face, and they trying to get the key to the hotel, and the people looking at him like, and he uh, he pulling her, and she like, eh, get off me. So uh, that's crazy, but that goes to show. But you know, Tina Turner, she was gullible in the beginning, and a lot of times people that are victims is because they're green. That's a, a phrase for saying that they're gullible or easy to get, you know, to control. And it's like once you get into a controlling relationship, it spirals to where the dominant person that either has all the money or all the power, they can pretty much run the person that don't really have much. So, um, I'm gonna add my story into it. Okay, I met some idiot and uh he was actually around the way dude. You know how you know dudes be like, Yeah, I had this around the way girl. Or this was this around the way boy, you know. Like he was known, but you know, I was just getting out a bad relationship with my kid's father. So he was kind of like a rebound. Like everybody gets a rebound relationship, meaning like you break up with somebody and you get with somebody to get your mind off this person that you done broke up with. So I felt sorry for him though because like, like I said, he's around the way boy. So I actually seen girls playing him. But if I would have known about him, what I end up finding out, I would have never dated his ass. Like you ever look back on some of your relationship, like I should have never motherfucked, even nowhere near been with this person that I gave my time to. So, you know, you try, like, like you guys say, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. I can't turn no damn hoe into a house husband. So I couldn't turn this whole dude into no dang house husband, but I tried and I paid for it. So, uh, you know, I ended up dating him and he seemed so nice. He took me out wine and dine. He spent all the time with me and all this stuff. And he made me feel so good. But as years went down, like we, we started, we was together for like almost about, uh, about seven years before we went from Baltimore and moved down to North Carolina. And it's like, as soon as we moved down to North Carolina, I should have known that that was a move to take me from my family. Cause you know, when a dude or even a woman feel like they got you away from all of your support, that's when the control starts to try to come out. It comes out the bag. Like they say, you never really know somebody until you live with them. And that's true. When I started living with him, that's when a lot of things, red flags started coming out. So, uh, I should have seen the red, red flag before we even moved to North Carolina because I remember one time, you know, you know, obviously guys got friends and girls got friends or whatever. And sometimes, you know, we'd be hanging with his friends and there's a time where he had to take his friend home. But obviously I had my, my kids, so I don't let just random people sit in the back seat by themselves with my child. So I sat in the back seat um, and my oldest son sat in the front seat and his friend was um, in the back with me. But the guy that I was dating, you know, the around the way hoe, you know, he got jealous for no reason. Like he must have thought that the guy in the back was trying to holler at me or whatever the case. I don't know how he thought that, but he was one of them dudes where I couldn't even have male friends. If I had male friends, that was a problem. So I, that should have been a red flag right there because when we was riding in the car, he actually, like he actually stopped like skirt pulled over and drug the dude out and started bow just started beating this dude to a pump i'm like what are you doing he ain't do nothing like what is going on and he left the dude like so many miles out from where he had to go like left him stranded for no reason at all because i was in the back with him and i guess he don't like no dudes around his girl i don't i don't know but that is shit if you don't if you don't want you no know, guys around your girl then what you got your friends hanging around me for anyway so I just don't know, but that was a red flag right there. All right, so it, there's two main incidents in North Carolina, really three, that I'ma tell that stands out. All right, matter of fact, let me see if I got one. Let me see if I got one, cause I'ma show y'all. Yeah, I got one right here. Now, what do you think this is? A lot of women, y'all know what this is. This right here, this, this is a eyebrow razor and you know obviously you know you you arch your eyebrows with it and you would think this thing is harmless right but this thing is far from harmless this thing can do some serious damage and i say that to say look at my arm i don't know if y'all can see this but 
I'm really sharing a piece of myself with y'all. That's why I said I wasn't sure if I wanted to share. But if this story helps somebody, by all means. You see this? I'm sure y'all see this in a couple of videos. And y'all probably wonder, like, damn, what happened to her arm? Because every now and then I get questions from people. And maybe mainly, like, kids. Like, kids that see me, whatever. And they'll see me. They're like, ooh, what happened to your arm, miss? And, you know, I'll just be like, oh, nothing much, you know. But... I'm going to end the story with the two stories. All right, it was this one time because I was in college at the time um, in North Carolina. I was going to JCSU. So, obviously, when we moved down there, I had a van, but my van broke down. I'm playing my voyages suck. They don't never freaking last. But you need a car when you live in North Carolina. You do. So, at the time, he had his car. So, since my van broke down, we, we had his car. So... You know, you can't play around with me. I got to get to school. So, you know, I got to school and uh, I was taking night classes. And sometimes the night classes would end a little late because, you know, I had to study because I was taking um, calculus and I was struggling in calculus. Like calculus, I, I hate math. Math is not really my subject when it comes to calculus and algebra and all that stuff. So I would stay behind to get tutoring. And I guess he would get jealous because I wouldn't come home too early or whatever the case. So I think I came home maybe like an hour past the time that I would normally come home because I was getting tutoring and I had to pick him up from his friend's house. So I went to pick him up from his friend's house and he got in the car and everything. So he made me get in the passenger seat and he got in the driver's seat. And then I forgot, he was, I think he was like, yeah, where you been at? I was at school. Don't you know I'll be at school? You know I got tutoring from time to time. I called you and let you know what was going on, but that wasn't enough. So one thing led to another with verbal, and all of a sudden he tried to kick me out the car and leave me stranded. And like where we lived at was like probably like 30 miles from you know where we lived at. I'm like, man, how? No, you ain't about to kick me out. You ain't about to have me walking all the way home. And sure, you we gonna have to fight if you think you about to kick me out of here. So he tried to kick me out. And he actually got out the car and tried to get on the passenger side to actually drag me out. So he, for somehow, he, I think he got me out, but he didn't get me out without a fight. Like he, you know, he grabbed me, whatever. So, you know, I punched him and all that. And somehow I did end up out the car and I don't, you know, I, we, we out there, you know, we squaring up and all that. Somehow, and you know, I made a video about pressure points, how to knock somebody out. And I must have had my shit down here because somehow his punch must have landed right up in here and I went down for the count. Man, that dude actually got in the car, drove off and left me there. That was that time. So call the police and everything. Police don't, police don't. And that's another thing too. When you in a domestic violent relationship, you have to go through hoops just to get the law to really help you out they don't help you until something drastic like somebody gets seriously hurt or murdered and it's sad that the system is not set up to really help people the way it should until it's too late so they didn't really do nothing and um all right the second time was obviously you know we go back home to visit so we went back to baltimore to visit family and obviously we had to get a hotel and i don't even know what we was arguing for then but uh I think we was had just came from seeing family and we went back into the hotel and I think I said something he didn't like. It was something that he is it, always the trigger like I said with the Ike and Tina how she said all his music sounding saying I think I said something he didn't like and it ended up to where he tried to lock me out the hotel and I still had because we had a car burner and I still had the car keys and I was like he was like man you better give me my motherfucking car keys bitch give me my car keys I, said, I ain't giving you shit. So he tried to get up on me and I think I got his shirt. I got his shirt some type of way. And he's like, man, bitch, get off me, get off me. And then he started swinging. But obviously I got you by your shirt. So I got your ass now. So I think I had him in the headlock and he up there trying to swing, but I'm like swinging on him doing all this. And somehow like the uh, entrance to where you, you know, you get the key in the hotel was right around the corner from the hotel. So somehow he drugged me like he was walking while I had him in the headlock, you know, walking it. And they walked it back into the hotel with the guy. And it was an Arab dude. And the Arab dude, while I'm just uh, hitting him and he banging on me and I'm banging on him. And the Arab dude, get out of here with that before I call the cops. 
I'm looking at her. Yeah, call the motherfucking cop. I'm a female. Don't you see this nigga? I mean, it might look like I got him, but shit, he hit me too. Shit. Now, that time, this is Baltimore. Baltimore police don't play. Like, they actually did something. Like, they came that time, and uh, he was like, yeah, she got my car. I said, man, this is our car. We rented the car, so you ain't about to get these keys. And at that time, they was on the woman's side. So they actually let me keep the keys, and they told him he needed to walk. So you damn right. I kept, because we was actually there for like two or three days, and I let his ass walk around like without the car for, until it was time to go back home you want to act like a damn fool that you gonna suffer like a goddamn fool so yeah he he had little lumps and bumps on his face and i had lumps and bumps on my face but shoot that's what i'm saying like tina turner might not stood up for herself but this female right here my brothers told i got brothers and the daddy and my brothers always used to try to had me wrestle or fight and stuff so that's why i'm tough as i am like my brothers make sisters tough and my brothers made me kind of tough so even though i ain't gonna say i'm strong as a dude but if a dude fight on me he ain't gonna get no easy fight i'm gonna fight the fuck back so all right last but final fight with this dang dude all right so you know obviously we live together in north carolina and i think uh this this it always starts verbal see in a domestic violent relationship, it's either verbal, um, verbal causes mental, and, and you got physical. Now, a lot of times, guys or gals that abuse people go for people that's weaker than them. So they will try to manipulate your mind with things, or they'll try to find out what's your low self-esteem points. And once they learn what you feel low self-esteem with, they use it against you, or they use money against you. And in my situation, he was a truck driver. So he was, of course, making, like, he had his own authority. Like, he was doing his own thing. So he was making pretty good money. And the fact that he had money, like, he always wanted them, them little punk-ass dudes that buy love or buy people. So he thought that he can buy me. But I'm an independent female. I don't want your money. Like, if I'm dating you, I'm dating you because I like you for you and not for no money. Because the same money you're giving me, I can get it myself. I don't need no nobody's money I make my own money sweetie pie so you can't buy me so it's harder to get to me that way but he tried though so go back to the story I think uh I think I said something to him about uh I think I was arguing because my son did something so I took my son's TV from him as a form of punishment you know you want to be bad you know I take your TV away for punishment so I took the TV to try to put it in our room but he was trying to rule the room. Like, you need to go back because we had a four bedroom, but all my kids occupied all the rooms. I said, I paid rent in this goddamn house. What I look like sharing rooms with my kids and we in this room together? This me and your room. So, if I want to bring a damn TV in this room, then I'm bringing the TV in here. So, obviously, you see how my face looks. It's confrontational a little bit. So, I guess he got a little irate. And by that time, I was, it's more stories I'm not telling y'all to the point to where it's stuff to where I've had a lot of black eyes I've been knocked out by this dude and the brusted lips so by that time my next door neighbor I used to talk to them and they knew what I was going through so my next door neighbor and I love her to death I wish I could hang out with her again she gave me a taser and I had the taser um sitting around and the kids already knew how things was and they must have heard it and somehow, some way, I think my middle, my middle age uh, son, he threw me the taser. So they, he must have knew that something was about to go down. So before you know it, all I see, like, cause I have good reflexes. So if it's out the side of my eye, the front of my eye, whatever, I just catch it. So all I know is like, oh, so I got, oh, a taser, okay. I know me, I'm about to get into it. So, you know, he, he got up, you know, all confident, like he's about to hit me again. So I said, oh, hell no. So, you know, I'm got the taser on about ready to tase this, this mother sucker or whatever. So, you know, obviously he's one of them punk dudes where he won't try a guy. He never fight. He'll back down real quick from a guy. And if you got a weapon, he would run from you because you got a weapon. And actually his previous girlfriend, she actually stabbed him in, his, in the same freaking arm through like from in throughout. So he had the same type of a scar on his arm and it's sad that he turned around and do the same junk to me so when i got the taser you know in our bedroom we had a bathroom 
So he, at first he was about to get all in my face until my kids threw the taser to me. So after they threw the taser and he seen it, he went from being all in my face and then now he like peering into the bathroom. So, but I peering right behind him with the taser, peering right behind him. So when he get in the bathroom, I put my arm like this in the door, you know, cause I'm trying to get in. Like I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get in there to get him or whatever. So I guess I left my, uh, you know, my, I left my eyebrow, you know, shaver thing on the bathroom counter. So I'm guessing that he picked it up because I guess he was, he get, probably was scared because he wanted them to do like, he, he, even though he had knocked me out, he know the fucking run because he know if I get up, I'm going to start keep coming at him. So he, he must have saw this on a, on the bathroom counter and he picked it up. So my arm like this. So I guess he seen me because I think I was like trying to get him or whatever. So he heard the and he must have got really terrified. But he picked this joint up and did a quick and cut my shit down to the bone. When I say he cut my junk down, he cut it like from here, from here to to here, and he cut it. I mean, like a fillet fish open, like how you would open a fillet fish. He cut my junk down to the damn bone. I still got nerve damage until this day. And my arm was bleeding profusely. And from when he cut me, obviously I yanked back. So he, he could shut he shut the door and locked it and then jumped out there and ran to steal my because by then he had bought me a truck. So he got out there and um, you know, stole my car. But that didn't stop me. Like I was still up and available. So, you know, I'm running out. I'm running out still running after him to try to get him but by that time when i got out he haven't gotten my car yet so i was still trying to get him with the taser and he, like he was he like six three i'm only like five seven so his little long legs he kicks me and jump and when he kicked me it landed in my head so i'm fucking bleeding profusely knocked out and by the time i get up you know i get up I, all i see is my wheels in the dust so you know as i'm walking back into the house blood is just like a dang waterfall just dripping up the sidewalk into the house and i'm just you know walking around out of confusion the police arrive finally and by the time the police get there you know i actually i think uh he's about to get he had to get a belt because he had to do a tourniquet around my arm to keep me from bleeding to death and everything but i passed out so good thing they got me to the hospital to where you know they stitched my arm from the inside out but yeah man you can't you gotta be careful with that stuff because that can actually have bad effects to where dss can get involved because if anybody find out that you have a domestic dispute with anybody you can actually leave your kids behind that but luckily you know i didn't go back to him i actually left him after that and um they actually helped me get a place they helped me get away from him to where i did end up leaving him but this is the last well there's a couple more stories i'm gonna tell but you know okay let's fast forward years years ahead so now i meet my husband that i'm with right so uh you know i'm with my husband and now i'm the bad guy now because now i'm so used to this fool you know putting his hands on me so you a lot of times when a woman goes through domestic violence in their head i'm not going to never go through this again it's like triggered like ptsd if i see this type of whatever again i'm going to do this and do that so my ex you know he used to uh you know try to talk to other females or whatever so i don't do good when i feel like i'm getting played or if somebody is being disloyal or dishonest like i flip the fuck out because i'm sick and tired of dealing with it so um there was one time where i think uh um, I think I found out that he was talking to an ex-girlfriend of his from back home. So we used to work at the same place together. So I used to take him to work and all that stuff. So I picked him up from work and when he get in the car, he don't know that I'm all, you know, I didn't look through his phone and I didn't found all the damn Facebook messages and all that stuff that he was texting back and forth trying to get naked pictures in front of him and all that. And that just fucking fueled me. I got pissed. So all right i drives up you know i drives out to pick him up he get in the car i look at him with a look that could kill and when he got in the car something was like pow 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 he was like oh. <laughs> that dude looked like he looked like a five-year-old that just got slapped the hell up like he's about to cry <laughs> i said 
<laughs> Damn. <It> was, <laughs> I said, man, I said, you can't. Why the fuck you still talking this, that, that, that? And that argument went until we got home. And then uh, it was another time we got into it. And I think he ended up slamming me on my face to where I bit through my lip. So, you know, I got a little scar right here fucking with this dude. So, it was an actual another time. I think he was just pretty much of a nag. Like, I don't do good with naggy dude. Like, I just don't have the patience to deal with a man that's always in my ear. Like, I'm a free-spirited type of person. Like, I'm very independent, and I don't like to be told what to do. That's why I think I'm going to be single for a very long time because I don't like being controlled. I like to do what I want, when I want, how I want, and all that. I make my own money, this and that. So, I think it's pretty good that I'm single, and I probably need to be single for a long time because I don't have time for all this where you at, who you... Because it's like most relationships I get into, it tends to be where they want to control me or try to keep me on lockdown and you ain't locking me down i'm not i mean i'm a loyal person like if i'm with you i'm with you only but i don't do good with being told what to do my parents don't even tell me what to do no more so what i look like trying to be controlled by you like that just that just doesn't work but like i mean me and my husband we at ex-husband we actually uh got into it before i came to prime I mean, things got so bad to where I almost didn't make it to prime because I think we was arguing about, uh, I forgot what it was about, something, and uh, it ended up to where I think I started beating them with my keys or something like that. So it got to a point to where I think the police was called and I think he slammed me again. <laughs> he slammed me again. Like, he, like now, he wasn't that tall. He was only like 5'3". He was a short dude, but he could fight his ass off, though. Like, he, he don't hit a woman, but he will slam the shit out of one. So, even though I was putting my hands on him, his reaction was to blow. Like, like real quick. Like, here, fold you up real quick. Boom. Like, damn. Okay, little nigga, you got it. Excuse my language. All right. So, it ended up to where... Uh, the police came and you'd be surprised how they would take a female to jail real quick like they took us both to jail but they kept me and let him go I said I said uh uh I said why y'all let him go even though I guess they said I was the aggressor so they kept me and the good thing he ain't want to press charges because if they did I wouldn't be working for prom right now they dismissed it because he didn't want to pursue the charges but that goes to show that, you know, sometimes when you go through something, it can turn you to the person that you didn't want to be. So you really got to control that. So my thing is, if you were somebody that is mentally, physically, verbally, any type of abuse, leave. Like, you can always start over. I mean, a lot of times, like with the guy, the first relationship I was talking about, when we moved to North Carolina where I was by myself, I couldn't just leave right away because I didn't have no car. My car broke down. We was living together. So I'm like, damn, how am I going to start over by myself? I don't have no help. But when all that happened, you know, I got the resources I need to start over. So I ended up getting a job. I worked my way to where I built myself up all by myself. So you can do it, you know. So, you know, I fought the charges off and, you know, I got that off. To where my recruiter worked it out to where they got me in there so it was it was tough though because it took like almost a month to two months just to go to court just to get the case dismissed or whatever but yeah you got to really be careful with this stuff because especially if you got children it can ruin your kids lives they have these memories that they're like mom i remember when you used to let daddy beat on you like i can't stand that dude man like or i remember when when you mom used to beat on you like she just blah 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 I mean, shit, it was this one, my uncle, right? Uh, my uncle had a girlfriend, and they was they had went to a party. And I guess she was, like, all dancing on guys, just dancing. And, you know, he a man, so you can't be doing that. That's disrespectful. So, you know, he go up to his girlfriend, like, hey, I don't appreciate you dancing with guys. You need to chill out. And before he, you know, when he looked, when he looked back and then looked back, all he see is a pow right in the face from his girl. So, you know, he like, like, he, he's a true dude. And he, his homeboys was looking. He like, oh, hell no. So, he went to where after she did the pow in the face, like, she hit him so hard. Because this was, like, a long time ago. I'm guessing, like, he, my uncle's old, so, of course, he's an old man. So, it's from back in the 70s. So, he had platform shoes on. So, 
She hit him so hard, she knocked him out of his shoes. <laughs> she knocked him down out of his shoes. When he got up, he got up like poop, 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 poo, and not like he beat. Like that's not funny, but it's funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he, she knocked him out of his shoes. Then I got a sister. She got a boyfriend. She stay beating on her man. Like she got this one guy, one boyfriend she used to have, and uh, I guess he don't work. So she kind of buys her men. So she spends money on him and everything. So whenever she wants sex or want this or want that, he can't tell her no because she say no. She was like, that's what I'm paying you for. You better, you better take your clothes off and give me what I'm asking you for or else. And you know, you like, come on, man, stop. I don't want to right now. And before you know, it's like, wop, wop, wop. And then all he can do is the ropey dope. Like, come on now, come on. <laughs> he got it. Uh, he pretty much got that abuse for years. And shoot, there's a lot of times where just to show off for our company, she be like, look, I'm about to hit such and such in the head. Look, and he ain't going to do nothing either. So he just be sitting there minding his bed like, whoop de doop de doo. Before you know, a hand come on like, pow. Like, dang, what you got to do that for, man? <laughs> It's not funny, but it's, I'm telling you, dudes going through it too. It ain't just the women, it's the dudes. And we talking about Baltimore. A lot of this stuff is Baltimore issues. I don't know about all the other cities or whatever, but you come to Baltimore, these are the kind of stuff that you go through. Like, you know, it's rough. Like, it's, it's pretty rough up there. Like, you got to defend yourself. So, I ain't saying all females is, is whatever. But, like I said, I come from a family of brothers, so... I'm a little rough around the edges, but I don't take no junk. Like, if you want to be disrespectful, then I can I can hang with you. I ain't about to sit here and let the disrespect fly like that. So maybe that's why I'm able to be a truck driver because I'm rough around the edges. Like, I'm still a lady. I'm still professional. I'm very intelligent. But at the same time, I know how to protect myself, and I know what to deal with and not to deal with and things like that. So it is what it is, though. But... You know, it might have to be a part two because I wanted to cover it in a different way. But like I said, when I get on the camera, it comes out differently than how I thought that it would come out. But I hope you guys enjoy. That's just my story and my take on domestic violence. And the video is actually going longer than I wanted it to. So I finally got this topic off. All right, guys, y'all have a lovely night. Time is of the essence make better time of it don't be beating on your spouse can't we all just get along so yes y'all have a lovely night and make love instead of beating and banging on each other deuces